welcome back from that quick break. Now, back in the day, the easiest access to games for many Nigerians were the PS1, PS2 consoles at the football viewing center for the, or the barbershop. Unable to afford these pricey video games, the average gamer relied on these public spaces for their favorite pastime, which meant the country's gaming industry at the time was solely dependent on the people in wealthy neighborhoods who could afford to buy these games. Now, fast forward to 2023, more people can afford to get the games of their dreams at home whenever they want, uh, most times even from their phones. Now, joining me now to discuss further is Oscar Michael Isio, a creative entrepreneur with over eight years of experience in the games and tech industry. He is an alumnus of Nest Africa, where he acquired skills in software entrepreneurship, and he's a graduate of the IGDA Foundation Next Gen Leader Program for the 2021 Virtual Exchange uh, Program. Currently, Oscar Michael leads uh, Africa Complicate, a launchpad for stakeholders in the African immersive and interactive media industry. Well, many thanks for joining me on Business Insider, uh, Oscar. Yes, uh, I just, uh, from my intro, there's a whole lot going on in the uh, games industry. And uh, from what we hear, globally, it's worth about $200 uh, billion, dollars, bigger than even the music and the movie industry. But uh, why don't we hear of, of uh, the industry here in Nigeria, Africa? Is there really an industry in uh, this part of the world? Yeah, the, there is an industry in Nigeria and Africa. Mm. The reason you don't hear it's because the value of the market is not as big. Like if you look at the tech space right now, there's a whole lot of talk around fintech mm. and the likes. Uh, that's because of the amount of investments going into there, the yeah. amount of transactions happening in that sector. But in the African games industry, we don't have that attention yet. That's why. But there is a very huge industry that is growing. So if the industry is really growing now, how come, I know we have uh, people who are very techy, yeah. are very business savvy, how come they are not really seeing it? Or is it that uh, there are other issues uh, that might be plaguing it uh, from um, expanding or taking its uh, full potential in this part of um, the world? Yeah, so the issue with the video games industry is it's yeah. not transactional. Like oh, when you okay. look at the average tech startup, you see if you're using a fintech app, the startups, they take commissions once you make a transaction. Yes, it's very transactional. Mm. But the video games industry is, it's just like the art industry. It's in the creative sector, mm. just like movies and music. The way of making money is different. The revenue models, the business models are different. And it's very difficult to mm. monetize. I mean, okay. look at the hierarchy of what Nigerians spend money on. Mm. Games is the least. Mm. You get, you buy a recharge card, so there's transaction. You get food, you get clothes, but games or movies are the least places we spend money, and that's what's affecting the sector. Okay, and uh, just like other uh, businesses, uh, I know there should be like a value chain and stakeholders input. What are the major stakeholders in this particular uh, industry? Now, that's another thing contributing to the slow growth. Mm. So the industry right now is driven by passionate game developers who mm. are more like programmers. Programmers. But as we know, for any industry to survive or thrive, you need stakeholders from several verticals, the public sector, the private sector, finance, communication. So that is what is missing. Mm -hmm. The uh, proper value chain, you need the developers, you need people who are into marketing, publishers, investors, mm -hmm. and a lot of these people are not yet in the African video games industry. Okay. So that is what is missing, but we're seeing growth in that as well. People from the business side, the finance side, the beginning to pay attention and that's awesome to see. Okay, fine. It looks like a very wonderful and lucrative um, you know, business if one actually knows and understands um, the industry. But when I hear uh, about $200 billion uh, you know, globally, that's a whole lot. Yes. You know, and um, we can actually uh, get, maybe if it's just a chunk of that uh, bulk amount and uh, you know, even get a uh, revenue ENA for the country where yeah. we're talking about issues uh, with our forex and all of that. But then again, let me understand the kind of activities that are happening in the sector of uh, the gaming industry or video gaming industry. Yeah, due to its 
enormous potential. Um, a lot of activities are now ongoing to educate the various stakeholders so mm. we can attract these people. Okay. So far, it's been filled with the developers, the people okay. that build the game. Yeah. But we're seeing much more activity trying to attract the public sector, the private sector to come and invest, as well as create an exchange so yeah. that this industry can grow. So you see there are more associations coming up, like yeah. there's a game developer association in Nigeria, there okay. is in Ghana and many other places. There are conventions as well coming up in Nigeria. We organize a convention in South Africa. There's what they call the Africa Games Week. Yeah. So a lot of activity is ongoing to educate stakeholders across board on the potential as well as attract investments. A lot in of activities. You talked about Ghana, you talked about South Africa. Now. Yeah. So what have been the major <laughs> takeout from these activities that have gone on so far? So the major has been that exchange. Um, yeah. There are more stakeholders from even outside the continent coming yeah. in right now. And they are trying to get insight onto what is happening on ground because data about the industry is not out there. Yeah. And that's a big issue. Yeah. So now that there's that exchange, interaction with stakeholders, they're beginning to understand the challenges they are facing and to see how best they can plug in their services and resources into. And I think that has been the massive one. Unreal Engine, one of the makers of the biggest softwares used to build games, one of the makers of the biggest softwares used to build games just recently came into Nigeria this mm -hmm. year because of that exchange that has been happening virtually, and we're looking to see more of that happen. Okay, okay. like almost um, every other sector, I'm sure the video gaming in, um, industry has its own challenges. We mentioned some of them in passing when we're talking about uh, you know, what it is doing globally and why Africa is not actually getting into that. Can you uh, tell us more about other challenges that is peculiar or that are peculiar to the African continent? Yeah. So aside, aside, of course, the obvious fact of lack of funding, mm. <laughs> which is across board, yes. um, the main issue here, yeah, I would say, is that lack of stakeholder, um, having a diverse set of stakeholders in the sector. Mm. That would, is what I would say. Because if you look at the music industry, there is structure. You get, they are the producers, they are the distributors, they are the marketers, they are the ones that organize events, and everybody gets paid across board. But in the video games industry of Africa today, that is missing. That value chain is mm. not existing. Okay. And I would say that's the big issue, because yeah. it's only when all the stakeholders come together and collaborate yeah. that our industry can grow. Okay, so when I think of our video games specifically, I think of the, the PS, the one to five, as it were, <laughs> and um, the wonderful yeah. um, games uh, uh, that are on it, you know. So speaking of which, uh, do we really have uh, uh, games that are really peculiar to us, um, Nigerians and um, Africans? Yes, there are lots of amazing games like that. Mm -hmm. uh, though the first thing you need to know is the African games industry, yeah. or gaming industry, that's in terms of people that play games, is mm -hmm. mobile first. Okay. So due to lack of access, not everyone can afford those consoles. Okay. If you want to succeed in the market, you target mobile mm. gamers. There are lots of. And when you look at game developers in Africa, a lot of people also focus on that. You see more mobile games, okay. talking about our culture, talking mm. about tradition, selling that African, mm. you get the African vibe, putting it out there. Yeah. Though we have more people now looking to publish for PC and consoles, yeah. as technology is becoming more accessible to yeah. develop, and I mean, the network is opening up. All right, I still have um, Oscar uh, Michaels uh, with me, and we're looking at the video game industry in Nigeria and Africa to be specific. We'll take a quick break and uh, we'll return with more. Don't go away. <laughs> 